Well, single cells imaging is a very novel technology just for the last five years. Uh, the conventional techniques, when we want to want to measure single twin cells, mostly people use uh, traditional techniques to block the cells, freeze the cells, and most of the time, for sensitive reason, people will use uh, hundreds of cells and thousands of cells. So what is that you have static pictures of fixed cells to, to see them. So with nanotechnology, what can people can do now is to use nanosensors, nanoprobe. What we can go is that go into the single cells, individual cells, living cells, using a nanosensor, for example, pool fiber to nano size, stick into the subcompartment of cells, and then measure the pathway. So the prospect of this technology is tremendous in many applications. For example, you can get really pathway of cellular response to drug testing, to pathogens. All these things can be done with nan advanced nanotechnology. Uh, you can look at really a cells to look at fundamental basic uh, parameters at the system's biology level. I mean that you don't break the cells into pieces to analyze it, but you see the cells, what it's doing, why all the other pathways are working. So the tremendous uh, uh, activity in this uh, area recently. Nanoparticles is, uh, has received recently tremendous uh, interest, and for good reason. Um, usually when people look at uh, cells, tissue, people use the dyes, fluorescence dye, color dyes, and you know, incubate the cells, tissue, and see the response of those in the stimuli. With nanoparticles, people can do this kind of thing, but has a more improved tools, for example. In nanoparticles, uh, people can use long-term measurement without the prospect of photo bleaching that people can see with a conventional dye. So you can have more robust, a more um, stable kind of uh, contrast agent, for example. In nanoparticles, people can also increase the sensitivity because you, you can put too, a lot of uh, label, a lot of fluorophore in a single nanoparticle. Quantidot is a part of the family's nanoparticles. It, uh, people use a really nano-sized crystal, and due to the confinement of this nano-sized uh, dimension, you, you get enhanced properties. You can have uh, different colors uh, of uh, uh, what you use for dye. So um, uh, quantum dots receive also recently a lot of attention. You can get maybe six, five, even up to a dozen of label together, I mean, uh, simultaneously. The plasmonic nanoprobe is another also novel technology. In plasmonics, uh, the term plasmonic is the enhanced electromagnetic fields of nano size and metals. So using plasmic nanoparticles, one can get the same kind of a multiplex, multicolor like on the block, or even higher. So when you have these uh, plasmic nanoparticles, like quantum dots and other type of nanoparticles, you have here tools for improved imaging, very stable for uh, biosensing, and also uh, a nice tool for uh, molecular biology research. Uh, Molecular seno is a new term. In fact, we were very excited about this technology because we, we helped develop this technology for the last, I would say, uh, less than a year. The Molecular Sentinel is a term that we use to, for biosensing, for diagnostic, and possibly later for therapy. The thing about this, uh, you want to, in the cells, in the tissue, to detect a disease, to detect action of pathogens. One way to do is to have kind of uh, in the old time, you know, the, the canneries bird in, in, the, in the mines. If things are cold, nothing happening, then you have a bird singing. But when, if something happened, they stop singing. So the molecular center concept is based on that kind of idea. We have here the nanoparticles. It has an, uh, a metal nano uh, sphere or nano sized particle. And then you attach in that nanoparticles a DNA loop. The DNA loop is designed to have a sequence that can find a um, specific DNA target or RNA target. What does it mean is that if it finds the defect genes, if it finds a, a gene from a pathogen, for example, HIV, or even for Homeland Security, a gene from anthrax, for example, then that uh, DNA loop that attached to the nanoparticles will hybridize. When it hybridizes to this, it opens the loops. 
And when it opens the loop, it separates the end of the other loop that has a label from the nanoparticles. And the plasmonic field is a very short range action. So when it sees something moving out of this field, it changes the, the, the intensity. So suddenly you have, a, when nothing happened, you have that loop close, and you have a very strong surface and hand Rama signal due to the plasma effect. When there's something, uh, for example, a defect gene that encounter or pathogen, suddenly that you open and you don't no longer see that signal or decreased signal. So you can see molecular signal like, uh, you know, when nothing happened, they're moving around the cells, you, you see that signal, but if something happened, then you see the change signal. Uh, one important thing of this molecular signal is that um, the Rama signal is very sharp. So that means that you can have increased multiplex uh, um, capability. You can launch into the cell to tissue multiple, dozens, even hundreds. You can detect dozens of diseases at the same time, or hundreds of pathogens, hundreds of diseases at the same time. And you can use uh, the spectrometer to monitor all these in real time. And if one signal decreases, suddenly you see some things going on. So this is a kind of uh, the, the action. Um, it's, it's a combination that depends on chemistry, on physics and biology. So, so this combination, all these technologies together allow us to come to the American signal. So what is now this prospect? The prospect, as we hope, is, uh, is manifold. We can use it looking in the cell, the pathway, the, the molecular effect of what's going on. For example, we have used the molecular sensor to look at uh, breast cancer, look at HIV. You can use for biosensing, for diagnostic. It can be uh, you know, put into a, a microchip, for example, detection for global health application. For example, in the global village, for, we can see you know, all these pathogen uh, at the early state, at the point of care, and, uh, and, and treat the disease. It can use for imaging. Uh, we can hopefully can do multi-contrast agent for multiple diseases at the same time. So these, we hope, are the prospects of the molecular center.